properties of production sets. I'm going to go through them uh, relatively quickly. The first property is that the production set is non-empty, so there must be some feasible production set, produ uh, some feasible technology. The second property is that the production set is closed, meaning that it includes its, its boundary. Uh, the parallel requirement in the theory of the consumer is that the upper contour set include its boundary and that the lower contour set include its boundary. Third property, there is no free lunch, so you cannot produce something from nothing. I'm going to write no free lunch. Uh, so what would violate this requirement? Something like this. A production set, maybe that looked like this. You can see here that at that point you're producing output with zero input. Um, but this is precisely what's being uh, um, precluded. More formally, by the way, I'm going to define no free lunch by saying that if y is in the production set and y is uh, positive, there are no inputs, then y must be equal to zero. It cannot be greater than zero. The fourth property is that zero is an, must be an element of the production set. So the production set must go, th go through the origin, must include the origin, rather. Uh, so there is the possibility of inaction. What is being uh, prohibited here? Something like this, where if my production set looks Looks like this. I have maybe sunken costs where if I want to produce no output at all, I still have to incur some costs on the input side, right? And these costs are sunken costs, so it's impossible for the firm to completely shut down um, and produce nothing without, without incurring any costs associated with its inputs. So, um, instead, the requirement is that the production set go through the origin, right? So it must include the origin, maybe something like this. The fifth property is um, the idea of free disposal. Free disposals means that having additional inputs will not reduce your output. So, if y is an element of the production set and y prime is uh, smaller than y then this means that y prime must also be in the production set so what we're saying here is that y prime what does it mean for y prime to be smaller than y it means that you have every same amount of uh, inputs, quantities for inputs, but less output, or you have the same output, but you have more input, right? And so if that's the case, then you, th this production set Y prime must be technologically feasible. Um, you will not be penalized because there's no cost to having additional inputs in terms of reducing your output. The sixth property is that of irreversibility. Uh, irreversibility means that if I'm producing uh, using a particular technology which is such that 
I'm using a, a production plan Y, which is in the production set, which is such, for example, that... So here, let me show you what the production set would look like. It would look like something like this. And Y... Let me pick Y on the production frontier. For example, Y is here. Y requires four units of input to produce three units of output. Okay, so Y is... requires four, unit of, four units of input and three to produce three of output. It's not possible once I've engaged potentially in this production process to then uh, use the output, the three units of output, as input to produce the four units of input to go back to where I started. So the the production vector negative y, which would be maybe somewhere around here, where I have four units now here of the input be being produced now it's an output by three units of of the output, the very same units, right? That is not feasible feasible. So next so if y is in the production set negative y is not. Seventh property is not increasing returns to scale. And that's in a nutshell the possibility of scaling down. Scaling down means that if a, a particular production plan is in the production set, then if I pick a number alpha, between 0 and 1, then alpha y must also be in the production set. So, for example, if I pick production set like this, here's a particular production plan y. You can see that it's possible to scale down in that any point here any alpha y which shrinks this uh, production set is actually also included I'm sorry, which shrinks this production vector is also included in the in the production set it's also not possible to scale up, right? now how would that condition be violated? the possibility of scaling down? I'll give you an example if I have oops, let me switch color if I have a production set that looks something like this, okay, there's this anomaly here, it is possible for me to pick a production plan Y and the value of for alpha, for example, 0.5, and I can see that alpha Y is actually not in the production set, and this violates um, the condition of non-increasing returns to scale. Non-decreasing returns to scale is a very similar idea, except now you introduce the possibility of scaling up. So if Y is a feasible production plan, then you impose the requirement that for alpha greater than or equal to 1, alpha Y must also be in the production set you can scale up. In practice, it might look like something like this. For example, production set that sort of goes up like this, and I can pick a particular vector. Any vector, it's easy, right? If I'm not on the efficient frontier, I can pick any vector y, and I can see that it's possible for me to scale up, but even if I pick y on the efficient frontier, right? I can see that for alpha greater than 1, I can also scale up. So that's the condition of non-decreasing returns to scale. Everything here in that region is such that that alpha y is uh, in the production set. If I combine those two conditions of non-increasing returns to scale, which is the idea that if y is uh, technologically feasible and is in the production set, then then alpha y is also in the production set if 
alpha is a number between 0 and 1, that's non-decreasing, I'm sorry, non-increasing returns to scale. Combine that with the property of non-decreasing returns to scale, where the same thing holds except alpha is greater than or equal to 1, you get to the condition of constant returns to scale. You can scale up or you can scale down. So this holds for all alpha. And it looks something like this. Right? Here's my, my uh, production set. You can pick any production plan. Any production plan, sorry. Sorry, let's use red. Here is a production plan. I can scale down, right? I can pick alpha less than or equal to 1. As long as it's positive, I can scale up, right? I can pick alpha greater than or equal to 1. All of these are scaling down or scaling up. These are all possible. They're technologically feasible there in the production set. That's the assumption of constant returns to scale. Um, Condition of free entry. Free entry means that it's possible to combine businesses. So if Y and Y prime are feasible, they're in the production set, then the businesses can be combined, so Y plus Y prime must also be in the production set. There is unrestricted entry at the aggregate level. Now you'll note here that if um, if I pick y and y prime to be the same, the exact same production plan, I'm essentially showing that two two y is in the set, and then I can add to that. I can iteratively iteratively apply this to show that three y is in the production set, four y. Essentially, any um, multiple of the original production set as as, so, as as long as I'm multiplying by an integer will be feasible. So it's not exactly the same requirement as the idea that alpha y be in the production set with for all alpha, which is the idea of um, constant returns to scale, right? So here um, it's just giving me Really, the idea of the possibility of adding up these different uh, production plans. Property of convexity. This is um, this is an important assumption. Now, convexity is the assumption that if I pick two production plans that are technologically feasible, their linear combination must also be technologically feasible in the production set. As long as I pick alpha, a number between 0 and 1, alpha y plus 1 minus alpha y prime is also in the set. And you'll note that this, this requirement of convexity of the production set actually carries, implicitly carries the idea of non-increasing returns to scale. The condition of non-increasing returns to scale follows from the convexity assumption uh, why? All I have to do is pick, I can pick any two points, right? So I pick the point, the origin, 0, and I'm left with, I'm sorry, let's say, call this y prime, so y prime here, this is 0, I pick this, and I'm left with the requirement that alpha y be in the production set with alpha a number between 0 and 1, that's exactly what the non-increasing returns to scale assumption entails.